This is my roughly 15-year-old Dakine backpack. It's traveled with me far and wide to at least 20 states, three Canadian provinces, and even to Europe. And I finally decided to replace it. I think it's safe to assume anyone watching this video is already vaguely familiar with the LTT backpack. It was designed by a fellow small creator by the name of Linux Tectrix from the Micronation of Canadian, and it took about six years to design and an additional 74 months to bring to the market. Alright, jokes aside, the LTT backpack is a labor of love, and it shows. From the carabiners being emblazoned with the LTT logo, to the metal belts securing the handle. And its price tag reflects it at 250 USD. This backpack is more expensive than the Dakine that it's replacing by more than a factor of two. And it's more expensive than my two hiking backpacks combined. However, it isn't out of line for the market space that is competing in with brands like Nomadic, Knack, and even some of the higher end offerings from Timbuktu. I think to truly appreciate the LTT bag, we need to look at the backpack it's replacing. Despite being from roughly 2010 and a step below the brands that I previously mentioned, it's representative of a thoughtful, well-designed, well-made, tech-centric backpack that hasn't had an easy life. It's been used for travel as my carry-on, for car commuting, and later even bike commuting, and sometimes pulling double duty as an outdoors bag. Feature by feature, this isn't that far from the LTT backpack. It has multiple padded sleeves, including the one for the power brick, and the laptop sleeve stops before the bottom of the bag, meaning it's safe just to drop your laptop in. Oh, and the bottom of the bag's padded too. There's even a document slash passport sleeve. Oh, and it also had a chest strap, but that fell off like a few years ago. The build quality is pretty solid, but we can see evidence of wear and tear in the upper corner on the inside and also fraying in the interior and on the straps. For this backpack being a mid-tier campus cruiser, I think it's a tough tech bag to beat. I have a strong suspicion that most people who are interested in buying the LTT backpack already have a backpack that's similar to the one I just showed. The logical question is, is it worth upgrading to this backpack? And the answer is yes, or maybe, or depends. Let's get into that. The LTT backpack has plenty of videos that explain all the features in deep detail, so I'm going to speed run through these to focus on the big improvements and differences over my previous backpack. First off, the LTT backpack is much larger and heavier than the backpack it's replacing. The thing that sold me the most on the LTT backpack is that I'm a dual laptop user, and it can comfortably hold my 16-inch, 14-inch, and 12-inch laptops. It also has these two really cool sleeves that are perfect for cables and also dongles. Like the Dakine, the floor of the backpack is padded, and something to call out is the smaller sleeves are microfiber lined, likely for tablet screens, I guess. The main compartment has a nice interior zipper compartment that's double lined, and the water bottle sleeve being interior is a bold choice, but after many years of having an exterior sleeve, I know that I'd often stick my bottles in my bag. Oh, and before I forget, it has this cool hidden AirTag sleeve. On the exterior, there's a microfiber lined pocket that's likely designed for glasses, although I wouldn't probably stick my glasses in this, but in a pinch, I'm sure it'd do fine. Then there's the final main compartment, which is a door flap design. There's the large mesh pocket and two smaller pockets, the left one being some sort of slide pocket. The final compartment is a power supply battery pocket that lets you feed a cable through the bag's side. Subjectively, I think this backpack looks good, adult, and professional, albeit a bit bulky. I'm personally not into geek or gamer aesthetics, and this doesn't scream either. My biggest gripe aesthetically is I'm not a fan of black and orange together as they're the forbidden colors. As a personal bias, I graduated from University of Oregon and not Oregon State. There's this sturdiness and heft to this backpack, with everything being lavishly reinforced or padded. The LTT backpack is not small at all, and it holds 25.5 liters. This is larger than my Camelback 14er, which is my long day pack, which I use for 8 to 18 mile day hikes, although I certainly wouldn't use the LTT backpack on said hikes. I took this backpack on this hike because I just needed the B-roll footage, and man, not having a chest strap kind of sucks. The thing with backpacks is you're always trading size for storage capacity. It's big and bulky, and while I'm not the tallest guy, I have two inches on Linus, and it still feels large on me. 
That's expected because of the way it is shaped. I'd say the comfort of this bag is certainly above average, especially for the style of backpack. The ribline back claims to help heat, although I found myself getting fairly sweaty while lugging gear on a hike with this backpack. The longest trek I've taken with it is a little more than 7 miles, but it was sufficient for lugging around a camera, tripod, and extra lens. While making this video, unfortunately, I had to contest with the conditions of the real world. Resources are being pulled from all over the region. More than 300 acres have burned. Burned more than 530 acres. And we have not received an update on how much of the fire is contained. 35% contained. Is now 65% contained. Fire is now 80% contained. This is footage of the Tunnel 5 fire as seen from Mount Hood, Oregon. Yet another man caused fire in the Columbia Gorge. The wildfire season has taken on a new connotation in my own lifetime. Sadly, it's pretty easy to see the effects it has on the landscapes throughout Oregon. If you ever visit Portland, Oregon and travel east to the stunningly beautiful Columbia Gorge, you can easily observe all the damage caused by the massive Eagle Creek fire from September of 2017. It continued to smolder until May of 2018. Both of these fires were human caused. Yeah, this is kind of a bummer. And you're here to watch a review on a backpack. I promise this really wasn't in the script originally. So let's get back to that. But first, to lighten the mood a bit, here's a marmot I saw that same day. The weather resistance is solid. Enough so that when I was in the rain, my gear was protected in moderate conditions and fared very well in the snow. For a commuter in the Pacific Northwest, you'd want to use a waterproof backpack shell, although I'd feel much better using an Ortlieb style bag. Shells are just not the same as waterproof bags. As a former year-round bike commuter, I've been trapped in horrific downpours, and I was glad that my pannier bags were Ortliebs. The larger profile doesn't make it ideal for bike commuters. You certainly could do worse, but personally I'd go with something designed for biking. For most other modes of transportation, since maybe skateboarding, this is a solid commute bag, especially if you're lugging around more than one laptop. Where I think this bag truly shines is travel. I've used it multiple times as my solo bag for one to three day trips as I'm able to pack in my tech and my clothing as it can easily accommodate three shirts, three pairs of socks and underwear, two pants, toiletries bag, and a light jacket due to its larger size. While I travel a fair amount, I don't have a jet setting lifestyle, but it did fit under my seat the three times it's been on an airplane but I did have enough self-consciousness not to film myself on the airplane of me stuffing the bag under the seat. So you're just going to have to believe me, it fits. As I previously mentioned, the build quality certainly feels premium and seems to be built to last, with its metal backpack straps, a more secure chest strap, and much heavier duty lining and material. While I can't say I'm textbook frugal, I do prefer to buy things that are built to last. In nine months of owning the LTT backpack, it hasn't shown a single design flaw except for one. There's an issue with the carabiners breaking. Since being made aware of this issue, I haven't used them to hang anything off of them other than secure the zippers together. I can clearly see one of mine is near failing. Fortunately, LTT has a fixed plan for it and there will be a solution at some point in the future. After having and used this backpack for a while now, I have a fine appreciation of what it's for, but it's important to establish what it isn't. It's not an everyman backpack, or a campus cruiser, or a pack for a biker or hiker. Of course, there's nothing from stopping you from using it as such. If you need a no compromises tech backpack capable of safely carrying multiple laptops and gadgets, this is it. Its heft and bulk is not a bug, it's a feature. It easily carries my three laptops, 140 watt charger, a digital camera, headphones, and still has enough room for covering the prospect of working remote for a day or two before taking an extended weekend. I think this bag is well designed for my wants and needs, but it's not an every person bag due to its size. If or when LTT makes a smaller version of this backpack that still holds two laptops, I think they'll find that's even more popular as it'd be more of a campus or student or daily commuter bag. I guess what I'm trying to say is this is a bag designed for a niche audience, not a jack of all trades. If you're in that niche, I doubt there's a better bag.